Hello everybody, welcome back to new Grotef Hangar tutorial. And in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you on how to add actual pushable buttons to Grotef Hangar. This is pretty simple, so yeah. Uh, first of all, what you want to do is jump on the Discord server, link for that's inside of the description. Uh, scroll all the way down to see push button, and uh, yeah, just import this to Grotef Hangar. You have inside of Q stuff, and then in push button, you have the actual examples. By the way, those both examples are actually straight up just for the blend version. So if you drag them in, they may not work uh, if you do not have blend support. Um, but yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, you can uh, just like add them here. It's not very hard, you know, you just go to base or whatever it is, you know, and then just drag this into here. It looks like it disappeared. I'm going to show you how you fix that. There we go. Just add that button. The way you're going to fix this is, I think this one you just have to increase by 100. Yeah, there you go. If you turn up the scale factor to 100, this will as well work for FPX. Um, by the way, I added some stuff. Uh, you will not have like the one time press or default toggle. Maybe I'm gonna update it, probably not, but yeah, this is not really interesting for you. So, a uh, pretty simple thing what you want to do is you just want to, like, you know, when making one, for example, you just want to have the actual pushable thing, but it'll make sure this is not static, else it won't be able to get moved. Uh, probably want to turn the layer to trigger or something that's not walkable. Um, then, Make sure it has a collider. You can by turn on this trigger. Doesn't really matter, I think. But yeah, the hand tag, you can as well do like finger collider if you have those. Uh, that will work as well, of course. And the trigger uh, percentage is basically when you actually look at the button itself um, and you have Gizmos on, like this thing up here. You guys can see this, like this little blue dot, uh, or like circle, or sphere, I mean. Um, this is basically the point where it pushes from, so this is where the surface is. Uh, so basically you need to make a button top as an empty game object. Um, but you just want to make like an empty game object, move it to wherever the actual surface of the button is. I'm so much zoomed in, okay, that's crazy. Uh, zoomed out, I mean. Okay, um, then you just want to put this into the uh, button top. So now it will uh, know that the surface is right up here. It might go to like different directions um so in this case it would for example now go there just want to you know make sure that's the right uh, direction it's going or as well can even make it like this uh if you want like two of them or maybe even three um i just have it on z because this is the uh blender kind of thing you know this is like the actual model which is uh, made in blender so that's why it behaves differently um it's just simply better as well because it's rotated, you know. Um, but okay, the push distance is actually how far you can push it in. So you guys can see, oh, you can push it uh, to here, for example, and push it to up there. Uh, this is just where you push it. Push speed is just for the smoothing. It smooths a little because else it might be very jittery or very weird to use. And now again, the last thing, by the way, is the oh, what the heck? Okay is the trigger percentage. This is just basically how far you actually have to push it down for it to trigger anything. So in this case, it's gonna trigger the on button pressed, uh, which is if it's not in toggle button. Um, if it is in toggle button, but all you need to, I'm, I'm gonna show you this, uh, it's gonna use these both down here, on toggle press and on toggle button released. Uh, that's basically what it is all about. Um, so now if I actually go into the game, make sure that your hands have a collider. And just, I'm gonna, oh, I forgot that's right here. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, there we go ahead, but I don't like my player model uh, head looking weird. Uh, yeah, this is completely, you know, it, it does matter, okay? Just ignore it. So, if you guys can see, I can actually push it down. It actually goes down. You can kind of see the smoothing, uh, like when going up, for example, as well. So, I'm gonna actually push it in the way, you know, uh, it should trigger it. There we go. I had to give it a little bit boost because that's just how Unity handles it and then it goes a little bit through the ground. Um, so what I would do is possibly turn this down a little so it triggers more early. Um, so now it should work seamlessly. Yeah, so you guys can see. I'll just always take a random one. Uh, it of course can take them twice as well. You guys can see it works pretty good. Uh, this is just the way that, you know, the push button works. And then the same thing, but again, works for the uh, toggle button right here. Uh, though it just uses the uh, on toggle press and the on toggle release stuff. 
The rest is pretty much the same. Oh, why is this? Oh, because it didn't update it. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so here we go ahead. I'm going to show you this one here now. This is just the way it's going to work for uh, the, the actual toggle button now. You can see it works pretty cool actually as well. So you can see it goes down and then it snaps. And you guys can see uh, that it actually better snaps to the uh, push distance, not how much you actually have to push it down, of course. But you guys can see here uh, it turned red as it's supposed to. And now you guys can see I can you know not press it. And when I press it again, though, you guys can see it turns green again. That's just kind of the way it works. Uh, so yeah, this is working perfectly. So bye bye and love you.